All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, today is um, American Diabetes Alert Day. It's observed annually on the fourth uh, Tuesday of March. It is aimed at raising awareness about the risk and symptoms associated with diabetes amongst the um, American people. Now, diabetes occur when the body's um, blood glucose level is too high. This is caused by deficiency in the insulin produced by the body, which is the hormone that lets glucose enter cells and be used as energy. Um, diabetes is a big deal, especially in the U.S. And if you check, is a direct, um, what's it called, um, impact or direct consequence of their lifestyle and the kinds of food that they eat. They are really heavy on Yes, processed food, things that have heavy sugar and all of that. So is it direct? So when you see, you know, I remember the first time I went to Texas. <laughs> we see one other, we see burger or something. Yeah, NJ. So large. <laughs> I looked at the burger. The burger was looking at me. <laughs> like it was like this big. <laughs> so when I now looked around inside the restaurant, now only my sister be like, me and my sister be like, bro. Everybody, in fact, there was someone that was actually, you know, this our chair, yeah. double it in two. It was on a wheelchair. The, you, you, like, you literally cannot walk anymore, and he's still going to eat. Ha, I just said it is well. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. you can't really even help it's yourself. A big, it's yeah, a big obesity, obesity diabetes, and all of that. It's a big issue. big issue. So no wonder that, you know, they have a day just to give, keep on putting people at alert. But the good thing about social media that has happened, and I think, is really helping. If you go online, like, maybe it's because of the people I follow, yeah. there's hardly any day that I don't, like, my timeline doesn't, doesn't feed healthy. me on healthy greens, healthy yeah. this, and all of that. So people are actually churning out a lot of content, you know, that is helping people make better decisions, healthier decisions, and all of that. Because, really... You have just this one life. You have this one body. And you must take absolutely. care of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you want to say something. Yes, totally. Um, the, you know, we have had issues with people who have had diabetes. Some people think that, oh, if you have diabetes, you're going to actually, it, you are just around, to, you are just about mm. to kick the bucket, basically. But, you know, people have been living healthy lives with diabetes. And... They have been able to also tell people about it and cause some sort of awareness that is not a, a, a death warrant, basically. Mm. So when we see people with diabetes, it's not like they are um, they are about to die, but we should look at it from the perspective that we need to know our own uh, um, sugar level. Mean, yeah, level. Yes for us to be able to know what we're supposed to take in. So it's not only about healthy uh, living or healthy eating, but we should also go for checkups and know what we what our sugar level is, um, back to back or as, as often as possible to be able to decipher Absolutely. what we should take in and not take in. Absolutely. Sure. All right, so quickly, let's run through our news. Um, Mary, let me go with you first. Video. So my news is basically about the fire that happened at a section of Balogu Market today in Lagos. And this is mm. like the third fire this, this year. I don't understand. Some people are saying it's the evil part of the market that's catching fire. So I don't know if that's still under a political... Oh, this theory. Which one, one <laughs> under a political it's propaganda, you know. But this is very sad. Wow. Wow. So now, two things that always come up in my head when I see things like this. Why do we still have clusters of buildings? That's number one. Number two, these people that own these markets, have they really looked into insurance policies, you know, and start to take up some of these things for their goods? They might not be able to recover everything, but at least they will not be completely in the loss. What do you think? Well, do they insure? Do they pay attention to I insurance? Think some of them would. Hmm. But a lot, I think a great deal of them wouldn't. Hmm. And this is coming from the point of either wanting to save money for the business, always thinking that, you know, such a thing wouldn't happen, so you don't plan for it. So when it happens, you know, you are, it becomes a, an issue for the business, and hmm. it becomes a determining factor whether the business would 
see the light of day the next day because mm. some of these fire incidents before the fire service even gets to oh, the scene no. There's a lot then of the multitude as, yeah. it, as you can see, see from the, the video the crowd from the so mm. the fire service is not even able to perform their Duty. their duties to the utmost you know <laughs> as expected because first of all you have to clear out the people you're not going to be able to clear out the people so you have to do this work with the people there so on the other side people were still shopping <laughs> yes yeah so people go on like busy because it's, it's like in, it's, in normal, it's a very busy market yeah and again it's like it's now become a norm like oh okay one fire one shop they catch fire for that side you know but i just think people in that market should really pay attention to it and i think the fire serv the lagos state fire service should also no. pay attention you have Either a market they, yeah, they you have, have a market a so when you have a market you can have close by. these things happen you know, it's a it's a populated area and it's a business area. It's too condensed. You know what I'm saying? Can we but just they can't find a that's way? That's the thing. They can't clear it out. How? We have to, they NJ. Can't. Markets are, are beyond all of these things. We have to. Until they are able to build a market that would, just like the Yaba market, when they build the, the shopping, the, the Tejo Show shopping, show, so shopping this complex. can be possible too. Yeah, but it would take a lot. But, but you have to, you have to. I know that we have this to. This is too much. When I, like that market is suffocating. I can't even stand that market. It's not organized. If you go to trade fair, it's very organized. Yeah. Everybody have their, you know. So let the, let's let's create a and new plan for that space. market. Because so I think we, can, we can't keep having Lagos fires all the time. To, to take up, ah. you know, that's what we're looking for. To, that situations like this will bring up some questions. And Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what's your story, NJ? Um your story <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know if they can pull up the video so my story is about the um the nashville incident that happened um a few days ago i think it was even on the 27th which was what yesterday mm. yes this happened yesterday so um there's a lady called audrey hallett 28 years and there's a video, you know, circulating social media of a heavily armed 28-year-old woman, Audrey Halley. I hope I'm pronouncing that well. Making her way into Christian Covenant School in Nashville on Monday. She was armed with two assault rifles and a handgun. She entered the school from the side door before opening fire, killing six persons. Oh the Nashville police shared the video on its Twitter page with the caption, active shooter Audrey Elizabeth Halle drove to a Covenant Church School in her Honda Fit, parked and shot her way through the building. She was armed with two assault rifles and a 9 millimeter pistol. She's a formal pupil of the school and was later shot by the police. Oh, wow. So you can see in the video that um, she shot her way, and this was during while school was in session oh my God. and thereby you know this incident resulted in the death of some individuals including the nashville police um Officer. officers and you know this shooting thing happening in the u.s has become almost like the fires in nigeria has become a regular thing it's almost like a norm now someone gets in a bad mood or something happens see it's hard for the U.S. to be able to curb this issue on, you know, gun violence and everything because in some states in the U.S., they are allowed. Is You have the permission to uh, carry, carry a, gun. a gun, a licensed gun. And in some states, they are not. But that's the thing. So you have it in, for example, in Nigeria, you have a law in Lagos and you don't have a law that binds in uh, Ogun State. It means that someone, a car, uh, a weapon, someone who has a w license weapon. to carry a weapon in Lagos can decide to go with his weapon into Ogun State, even though it's unlawful. Mm. So you are leaving as a gap that cannot be filled. And based on that, that's the reason why there are so many of these incidences, so many areas in the US. A kid uh, has an issue at home, goes to school, or you know he's been, uh, maybe you know it's just disgruntled just and Shana and Guy management we talk about today we will come back to that conversation so it's it's a it's very a, sad a, story very and sad it's story. one that the the, uh, it scares me the most so. it's scary yeah we know where the kidnapper zone is you know this one you can you, you, to you think that your children right can actually yeah. go to school and not those, come back not come back it's quite it's, scary it's quite scary it's, it's quite a scary, scary situation 
Um, um, Isi, your story, please. Yes, just to, you know, um, also buttress something she said um, about, you know, you said something about children going to school and not coming back home. We had about, I think, uh, three nine-year-olds were actually killed in that uh, um, um, shootout. So it's, um, it's disheartening for yes, the parents and also, of course, disheartening to know that um, the children went to school and they didn't come back home because of somebody's, I wouldn't call it irresponsibility, but it's, um, it's heartbreaking, basically. So my story, Back to Nigeria, is on NLC. The Nigerian Labour Congress, of course, uh, suspends strike, plans strike over Naira scarcity, what we call scarcity. I hope Sayuame will come for me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the scarcity of uh, Naira. Um, this was, uh, this uh, situation was supposed to happen uh, tomorrow, which is uh, Friday, so Wednesday, 29th of March. And the plan nationwide strike was slated to commence tomorrow, but it uh, has been called off by the NLC chairperson. And uh, it was his name, um, Femi Falana San, was also in support of this. And the decision of the NLC is uh, to go on strike and uh, over the CBN's uh, Naira policy or redesign of the Naira policy. So my question here is not the fact that NLC is going on strike currently or plans to go on strike. My, my question here is where was NLC when we had the challenge of the Naira incident, when it was at the peak of it? Where was NLC when a woman was trying to play spider woman to get into a bag to get 5,000 naira for to feed her family. Where was NLC when people were going to the hospital and they didn't have cash to give to them at the hospital and they were turned back and for that sole reason, some people died as a result of it. Where was NLC when people were at the banking hall crying, lamenting, looking for a change to get something just to get small money to you know and going nude to get money to feed their family mm, so where was that? nlc that's my question hmm. and it's so disheartening that now that we are almost at the end of the problem that was caused by the cbn we have the nlc coming out to embark on strike hmm. that's practically medicine after death Hmm. That's very sad. Very, very salient uh, questions. So, okay, my story is uh, in the spirit of anger management. <laughs> There's one person that can never be angry. <laughs> when I saw it, I said, please, I need a feel good story for today. Our governor yeah. of Washington State, Ademola Adeleke, he was schooling our, <laughs> our minister for interior. I yeah, was teaching him how to dance you know, at the mm -hmm. unveiling of the Elisha passport office in Ocean State. You know, the good thing about this man, eh, he just finds a way to stay in the news. <laughs> He's up there to focus on what they were to do, the immigration, <laughs> <laughs> the passport office. Look at his dancing moves. As he was teaching the minister for interior, say, guy, this is how you dance it. It's not the other way. You know, uh -uh. no, but I just, you just, you just don't, you, 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 you cannot not but love the man because <laughs> he just makes me happy all the time. So, what we, so in the spirit of anger management, I decided, you know what, this is a good... So even if you're, if you're having... Your, your body is boiling, just go Google Senator Adebola Ale, 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 Ale. <laughs> I, All the anger will just disappear. Feel good, feel good moment. Yeah, feel good, right? So I mean, but, um, they um, launched the passport office in Ocean State. And of course, again, the man had to dance. So there's, this is chess to many more dancing because as long as they are commissioning different projects, you know, and all of that, he would always, you know, dance. you know, dance and be excited <laughs> about the project. So <laughs> congratulations to them. Um, having a, a, a passport office in Oceans in Elisha is actually very good again because um, some of these passports um, locations, especially in Lagos, we can see they are congested. So the more we have, yeah, you know, people don't have to travel all so the way. So people don't pe people don't have to travel all the way. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we will take a break. When we come back, as I mentioned earlier, we want to discuss anger management. See me smiling today. That's part of the plan. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>